Paldea Evolved is almost here, and today we are looking at colorless Pokemon. Welcome to Jank Play TCG. My name's Landon, and here we play Jank. And so, like I said, today we are looking at colorless Pokemon. Tomorrow will be the final day of our set review. Very excited about that. Be sure to subscribe so you can uh, see that pop up in your subscription zone and watch the final video see all the paldea evolved content let's let's jump into it right we're here for new cards let's look at it before we start i do want to thank the amazing website just in basil uh fantastic art and translation combination that makes it super easy to see in these videos in my opinion um yeah i just really appreciate all the work that they do and want to give them a huge shout out link in the description all that jazz so let's get started by looking at Girafferig. Uh, for two colorless energy, side bolt, 30 damage, flip a coin. If heads, your opponent's Pokemon's now paralyzed. Pretty awesome. I like the paralyzation. You can use double colorless. Your damage will go down to 10. If, or uh, Double turbo energy, I should say. Your damage will go down to 10, which is too bad. But, um, you know, having that chance to paralyze is always awesome. And... I, I always recommend going for chance to paralyze Pokemon because they can just come through at the perfect time. Uh, it also has a 3 energy attack for 70 damage that we don't really care about. Um, moving on, we do have Farafarig, the new evolution to Girafferig. Uh Pokemon I never thought would get an evolution. Certainly did in Scarlet and Violet. So let's go ahead and take a look at its attacks for one colorless energy either face choose either yourself or opponent that player shuffles her hand into their deck and draws four cards okay a disruption type uh attack but giving your opponent four cards is quite a lot giving yourself four cards is even quite a lot lots of people have been playing judge recently this is like a one-sided judge i'm not sure if this is as strong as we would hope especially on a stage one if that was on the giraffe rig maybe i would be excited about this because then giraffe rig could have something even better uh, but beyond that, it does have a 3 energy attack for 130 damage. That's it. Uh, it's not exciting me too much, you know? 130 is not bad, but it's not great. Uh, you know, yeah. Farafarig just isn't exciting me for some reason, and I do apologize about that, but... Yeah, I think it could have done better. Next up, we have Dunsparce. Talking about another Pokemon that I thought never would get an evolution. Actually, I thought uh, Drampa was going to be a Dunsparce evolution in Sun and Moon. Turns out it wasn't, and instead we got Dun Dunsparce, which is, uh, okay. But, let's go ahead and look at Dunsparce. So, first attack, find a friend, search your deck for a Pokemon, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle your deck. I... It's not that it's a bad attack, it's just one of those attacks where I'd rather it be search for a basic put onto your bench. I know the flexibility of searching for any Pokemon is nice, but when it's search for a basic put on your bench, that means that basic will be ready to evolve your next turn. And losing that, you just put it into your hand, so if you are looking for a basic, next turn you gotta play it down. Then you gotta wait for another turn to evolve it. Uh maybe you're searching for the evolution to Dunsparce, and maybe that would be better, but I'm not 100% sure. Let's see, we also have a 3 energy attack for 50. If I, I mean, Giraffe Rig had a 3 energy attack for 70, that didn't really impress me. Dunsparce 3 energy 50 doesn't really impress me that much either. So, yeah, just... I don't know, the numbers just aren't there, in my opinion, so far. These are also colorless Pokemon. You are not hitting weakness, period, uh, which also makes these hard to recommend. Now, we do have uh, Dundun Sparse, which is the evolution of stage one. For a single energy, Mud Slap, 30 damage. But for four energy, Digging Flash, 100 damage. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now paralyzed. Shuffle this Pokemon, all cards attached to it, into your deck. Now, we are seeing a lot more of Paralyzed, not based on a coin flip, which is certainly interesting. Shuffling this Pokemon into your deck, 
you know, and all cards attached might be a hassle, but you are getting a guaranteed paralyze and 100 damage. I like this. The biggest issue is that energy cost, trying to get that much energy on there. Even if you attach two double turbo energy, you're looking at going down to 60 damage, which is not a lot, but you do get that paralyzed. So maybe if there's another way, uh, I mean, I don't think uh, Bax Caliber works. Uh, it might, but even if it did, I don't know if I'd recommend this for it. It might be a fun one though. I would have to double check Bax Caliber. It's been a couple days since I looked at water Pokemon, but Dun Dun Sparse, I do think that Digging Flash has some use and it could be a lot of fun to kind of try to paralyze lock your opponent. And it seems like something that if you have the right energy acceleration, you could do fairly quickly. Next up, we have Wingle. 2 energy, 30 damage. Meh. It's a colorless Pokemon. You're not hitting weakness. We've already seen a Makahita that for 2, double col for two colorless uh, does 40. So this is below the bar on that. And then we do have a Pelipper here with the ability Rumor on the Wind. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may either search your deck for a supporter card, reveal it, put it in your hand, and shuffle your deck, or put a supporter from the discard pile into your hand. I like the flexibility of Pelipper, uh, because there's so many times when, if you are playing a deck that plays something to search for a supporter, sometimes you go to search, and it's not there. And it would be nice to know, maybe you can play a nest ball before, make sure your card's there, and if it's not, just go to the discard. Or just go to the discard if you know it's there, but sometimes thinning the deck out is part of the winning strategy. So I like the option of the two, um, especially, you know, if you can just search for a boss's orders when you need it, you know, get it from the discard since you had to discard it early or something like that. I like the flexibility. If we had scoop up net, I would like Pelipper even more. Without scoop up net it's hard to recommend without like a decent other Pelipper to be playing that way you have flexibility with your wingles um definitely something to keep an eye out for in the future but i i still like it in a way uh too many times i've lost supporters early in the game to the discard and i <laughs> silly me i wasn't playing a way to recover them Pelipper can be that way to recover it and play it that turn which is pretty sweet so next up, we do have Slack Off, uh, two color, colorless energy. Yawn, your opponent's active Pokemon is now asleep. I would prefer it for one energy. That's about it. Uh, it's not bad putting your opponent to sleep. It does give them a coin flip, but it's a 50-50 chance on whether they wake up or not. And it's pretty simple, you know. Uh, like I said, prefer it for one energy since it is asleep and not paralyzed. Two energy, it's begging for double turbo, but you're not doing any damage, so the negative 20 doesn't really hurt until you evolve up. So let's go ahead and check out the evolutions, right? We got Vigoroth here for double colorless, 40 damage, would be down to 20 if you use double turbo. And then for three energy, sharp claw, 60 damage, plus flip a coin if heads, does 60 more. That's 120 damage, and that's pretty good on a coin flip, three energy. Even if you minus the 20 from that, that's 100 damage. Not bad for an evolving stage one, you know? So let's keep going. See, uh, take a look at this slacking here. Ability back to bed during Pokemon checkup. If this Pokemon is asleep, flip two coins instead of one. If either of them are tails, this Pokemon is still asleep. I believe that is uh, similar to a Snorlax that is currently seeing play. Uh, however... Uh, three colorless energy, lazy headbutt, 240 damage. That is some, a serious amount of damage. That is fantastic. I absolutely love that. Even the effect this Pokemon is now asleep, I think is easily negated with the therapeutic energy that's coming out. Maybe I'm incorrect about that, but I, I think that slacking could be a weird rogue deck with something that keeps it from being affected by going to sleep you know so i think slacking has some utility 240 damage for three energy cannot be overlooked in my opinion that is fantastic i do wish we still had powerful colorless energy because if we did you could go up to 260 pretty easily then you throw on a choice belt and you're going up to 290 right now with the choice belt you're at 270 which is missing some key ko's on arceus and on lugia so 
240 though is seriously good and a halucha could really just clear up that uh 10 damage that you're missing you know so i think slacking really has something there with that attack and i think the whole evolution line i really like slack offs put them to sleep yeah it's for two energy instead of one but when you can get into slacking and be doing 240 damage that yawn could be very important put them to sleep next turn you rare candy slacking another energy and boom you're hitting let's say 220 due to double turbo energy you know i i absolutely love this slacking i think you gotta respect this slacking Next up, we do have an evolving basic. We've already looked at the evolutions, but this Fletchling, single energy, 30 damage. This Pokemon does 10 damage to itself. Um, is Talonflame the one that does more damage? If it's damage, I don't remember. Uh, but it's not bad. Single energy is very nice for 30 energy for 30 damage. And doing 10 damage to yourself it's just the price to pay it doesn't really matter you've got 60 hp if something's gonna ko you it's gonna ko you you know that 10 damage probably isn't gonna make or break this pokemon and uh similarly we've got rookie here another evolving basic we do have the stage one but we've already looked at the stage two look at the metal reveals if you don't remember but rookie single energy send back 10 damage your opponent switches their active pokemon with one their bench again i would prefer to choose however this is an evolving basic we can't expect to be too strong i do like the slight disruption that that can really give um the only downside is is that it might actually help out your opponent sometimes they have a bad start and letting them switch might give them the opportunity to put the act the attacker in the active so then you just don't attack which kind of hurts your strategy, but you know, it's uh, the price to pay for an evolving basic into the Corviknight, you know? And then we've got uh, uh, Corv's Choir, I think. Uh, <laughs> some of these Pokemon, I just don't even know. Um, I, I don't know how to pronounce them. Uh, single Energy Glide, 20 damage. It's okay. I mean, we just looked at a Fletchling that does 30 damage for Single Energy. Yeah, that's a basic. This is a stage one. Give us that 10 more damage. Three Energy Clutch, 70 damage. During your opponent's next turn, the defending Pokemon can't retreat. I do like attacks where the defending Pokemon can't retreat. However, there's got to be something else mixed in there for me, you know. Uh, maybe there's something that you can evolve up and poison and burn or something like that. Get some sort of status condition on them. Then they can't retreat from it. And they've got to deal with it sort of business. But it's still nice to know that defending Pokemon can't retreat. And maybe next turn... They can't get that defending Pokemon ready, and you evolve up and hit big and take the KO. All right, next up, we've got Tandemoss here with a single energy collect, draw two cards, and a three energy, 30 damage. That three energy, 30 damage is kind of pathetic, honestly. Like I said, we saw an evolving basic Fletchling with more HP do 30 damage for a single energy you know even if it was two energy that would still not be up to what we expect due to that makuhita that's hitting 40 for two colorless so three colorless for 30 damage is not great you are playing this for the collect draw two cards that is why you are playing this tanamos if you are playing this Tandemoss. Uh, there is another Tandemoss here. It is a single energy attack, 10 damage, 2 energy, 20 damage. Again, not loving those attacks. I do prefer the collect draw 2 cards. That 10 HP difference could be important. You are playing, obviously, a very sm uh, small focused Pokemon deck, and so I don't know how important that 30 damage is going to be. You really got it really got got to play into the strategy, you know. Uh, and then we have a new mouse hold as well. Two energy, fifty damage. Not loving it, but we do have this three energy, uh, ferocious gnawing. For each of your mouse hold in play, which is the stage one, put one damage count on each of your opponent's Pokemon. So the ideal way to play this is to have four mouse holds, and you put four damage counters. On each of your opponent's Pokemon. And that does get around Manaphy. Manaphy prevents damage from hitting your bench. This is not damage. This is damage counters. Check out my video about damage versus damage counters. If that confuses you. But I really like this. 
I just struggle to see this being like a consistent thing because it is a stage one. Uh, I know I built a mouse hold deck, which also wanted all the mouse holds out on the field. And that was the challenge. That was really difficult to pull off. I don't, I, I don't know if three energy, this attack would be worth it, but it might be, you know, maybe there's a mix of mouse holds you can do because it's just mouse holds in play. It doesn't have to be this particular mouse hold and that could be a lot of fun. Highly recommend checking this out. This one's going to creep up on you. It's not going to be something that you're going to be expecting, but one day someone's going to play this and you're going to be caught off guard. So just don't be caught off guard. I mean, that's the best advice I can give you. Next up, we do have what might be the latest hotness. Squawkabilly EX. Because of this ability show off, once during your first turn, you may discard your hand and draw six cards. You can't use more than one show off each turn. So this is limited to only your first turn, but this is a nice one of in just about every deck. You play down the nest ball, get that sucker out onto your bench, and some point during your first turn you discard your hand and draw six cards really the tough thing about squawkability ex will be removing the liability of a two prizer singer on your bench it does only have 160 hp that is not a lot um you want to get that thing off your bench i would suggest either like a collapse uh what is that collapse ruin stadium card whatever it's called or you can uh thornton this into another basic Pokemon. Maybe you Thornton it into a Tondamas so you can evolve into Mouse Hold when you need to. That sort of business, right? Um, Squawkabilly is gonna be seeing a lot of play, in my opinion, just for that show-off ability. And you can either try to take advantage of that. I mean, it's weak to Lightning. You gotta do 80 damage, Lightning damage, to get that KO nice and early, two prizes. Or you just expect your opponent to play something to get it off the stadium. I would suggest playing a collapse room yourself so that when they play that down, you play down the collapse room before they fill out their bench so they can't get rid of it. That would probably be the biggest play in my opinion. Um, just try to keep it on the field as long as you can so you can take those two prizes when you're nice and ready. So yeah, Squawkability EX, gonna see a lot of play in my opinion, and you gotta be prepared to take advantage of it being seeing a lot of play. I know I'll probably throw this in as a one of in a lot of decks. Next up, we have um, the final Pokemon in the Unity Wings lineup, Flamingo, and it's probably the best Pokemon in the Wings of Unity. However, it does not hit weakness, but what it does do is when you play it down onto the bench, you can search your deck for up to three Flamingos, uh, reveal them, and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck. That allows you to put three into your hand, then you can play Professor's Research to discard those three and immediately be hitting at least 60 damage with the Unity Wings attack. Sure, you have to put one onto the bench, which kind of hurts. Like I said, it doesn't hit any weakness, and that's one less Pokemon in your discard. However, it's just really powerful. If you mix in Squawkabilly with the, wing, the Unity Wings Pokemon, you could do turn one damage pretty high and really see some good results there. Flamingo is probably the best in the Unity Wings Pokemon, in my opinion. Uh, for those of you that don't remember, uh, Unity Wings, this attack does 20 damage for each Pokemon in your discard pile that has the Unity Wings attack. There's Watro and there's Murkrow. Watro hitting Lightning Weakness, Murkrow hitting Darkness Weakness against Mew v Max, and Gardevoir EX. Those are pretty good weaknesses to hit. So really loving to see what these uh, Unity Wings Pokemon do. I know here it says Wings of Unity. I'm pretty sure on the physical cards, though, it says Unity Wings. Uh, thank you so much for joining me for these colorless Pokemon reviews. I think we got a lot of bangers in this. Uh, excuse the term. Uh, I'm a bit older. Uh, but we got a lot of awesome Pokemon in here. I'm super excited to see how people play these. Honestly, the one that caught me off guard was the slacking. I really want to test that thing out. 
Um, but yeah, there's a lot of amazing Pokemon here that I think could be a lot of fun. Maybe not for Afraig, but all the other ones. I think I had something nice to say about all of them. Uh, so yeah, we've got some awesome colorless Pokemon coming in Paldea Evolved. I'm super excited. Uh, like I said at the top of the video, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on tomorrow, the final day of reveals or reviews of Paldea Evolved as I go through all the trainer cards and special energy. I'm looping those two together so we can end on Thursday and uh, Friday. I've already got a opening of like packs from pre-release because hopefully Friday my ETB from Pokemon Center will arrive and then I'll record that and that'll be out Saturday and then Sunday hopefully I can build something real quick and have a new deck for you guys to check out. I don't know what I'm building yet but I am super excited. Hopefully you guys are too. Go ahead and like the video, join the Discord and uh, until next time, keep playing Jank.